Today, we're going over the big questions that many families have when it comes to their 401ks. I want to show you how to maximize your contributions and your investments without a lot of hassle. Welcome to Simplify and Enjoy, the podcast and community focused on helping families have less stress and more options through minimalism and financial independence. I'm your host, El Martinez. This podcast is sponsored by Coastal Credit Union. Coastal's mission is to help you live a better life by offering you a better way to bank. Find out how at bankbetter.org. When we started our open enrollment series last week, we began by talking about this idea of big wins, where if you focus your attention on a few key expenses, you can financially put yourselves ahead. We really dove into answering questions about insurance, specifically health insurance, since so many families see this as one of those huge expenses out of their budget. The challenge with taking care of your health insurance is making sure that you get the coverage you need at an affordable price. From our experience and talking with others in the community, I've seen that getting these pieces into place now can set you up for some incredible wins later. Now, usually during this time of year, I pull in experts like certified financial planners where we dive into the nitty gritty details of the different benefits and options that may be available. I'm very grateful for those experts who took the time to share some of their knowledge. And I will have those episodes on the homepage for the next few weeks so that you can listen to them because much of what they said is still incredibly helpful. Our focus last week was on insurance, but this week it's on 401ks and investments. While you can make adjustments with your investments and contributions throughout the year, many families choose to do it now around the same time as open enrollment because they are sitting down together and looking at the numbers. With that in mind, I'm going to do what we did last week, which is go over these questions that I see from my side, either through discussions in the newsletter, our Facebook group, Thriving Families, or through those Google searches that I see when people first discover the site. In this episode, we're going to be getting into the biggest mistakes couples make with their 401ks and how to avoid that, figuring out how much to contribute and whether you should contribute at all when you're dealing with debt, and what to do with your 401k when you have limited investment options. Are you ready? Let's get started. Let's start off with talking about how 401ks work and why they're so important. For many families, this is the main account they use when they're saving and investing for their retirement. Decades ago, pensions were the way that people had their retirement money saved up, and this was employer-funded. 401ks were added in the late 70s. With these accounts, the responsibility now shifted to the employee. There are some advantages with your 401k. If you have a traditional plan, that money that you put in allows you to lower your taxable income now, As that money is growing and you're working, you're not paying taxes on that growth. Time is a huge ally when it comes to saving for retirement. Another possible benefit with your 401k is employer matches. This is where your employer is incentivizing saving into your 401k by putting some money in based on what you contribute. In a way, it's free money for you being proactive about saving for retirement. Just keep in mind, with some employers, the money that they put in is immediately yours. If you leave your job, that money that you contribute is always yours, but so is the employer's contributions. With others, you have to wait a certain time period to be fully vested. One of the biggest mistakes that couples make with their 401ks is not putting in enough to get that full match. Not only are you leaving money on the table now, but you're missing out on the growth on those contributions that your employers are putting in as well. So let's talk about contributions. With the 401k, there are annual contribution limits. In 2021, you can put up to $19,500 away. And for 2022, it goes up to $20,500. 
If you're over 50, there is a catch-up contribution limit. So in addition to that, you can put another 6,500 into your account. One question that I get from couples is figuring out how much they should contribute to their 401k. Typically, this question comes up because they have other financial goals that they want to achieve, including dealing with debt as well. I've seen that there's different advice out there. On one hand, you're hearing about you got to start early, even if it's a small amount. Then on the other side, you're also hearing get rid of your debt. So which one is the right move for you? Well, there's a few things to consider. This includes how much and what kind of debts are you carrying? Do you have federal student loans, which have a relatively low interest rate? Or are we talking about significant amounts of high interest debts like credit cards? If you're dealing with high interest debts like the credit cards, then the two of you may decide that the best move for your family is to pay off that debt as quickly as possible for a few reasons. On the number side, high interest debts is that the interest rate is going to eat up your payments and you're not going to really make any progress unless you make it a significant focus. Using something like a debt snowball or an avalanche can give you guys a way to remove that high interest debt and free up cash flow so you can make more significant contributions to your 401k. Also, you might want to consider the peace of mind factor. This past year and a half has been a challenge for many families. It's not surprising that some have found that their tolerance for carrying any kind of debt, whether it's quote good or bad, is significantly lower. That's what makes personal finance so individualized because we each have our own priorities and values. But as soon as you can and you're financially able, go ahead and participate in your 401ks to at least get that match that your employer is offering. And the great thing about that is once you're participating, you can then increase your contributions. You can either tie it to every year you increase it, or when you get a raise, you can notch up your contributions. Now, let's say you've taken care of that high interest debt and you're looking forward to contributing more. You're not sure how much is going to be enough to hit your retirement goals. So how do you run the numbers? That's a pretty big question, but we're gonna do kind of a back of the napkin calculation so that you can get an idea of how to get a ballpark figure. The first is define your retirement goal. It sounds obvious, but exactly what do you picture and envision with your retirement? Are you settling in a house? If so, where? Do you prefer to travel? Is it just going to be the two of you? Or do you have a family member that you're going to be supporting during your retirement years? What kind of flexibility do you want to have? I'm throwing these questions out there to give you an idea of how different retirement can look depending on your situation and your goals. And just keep in mind that a retirement plan is simply an estimate, a guess. Things can shift and change. Plans that you were so sure you wanted to have may not seem like a priority as you get closer to retirement. But the good news is if you're already saving up, it's so much easier to redirect that money towards your retirement goals because it's already in the account. The second thing you want to consider is when you want to retire. Typically, we're talking about ages 65 to 67, but you may decide that you want more flexibility. Perhaps you want to semi-retire early or you're part of the FIRE or FI community and you want to hit that target number much sooner than 60s. In that case, you're definitely going to have to go more aggressive with your savings and contributions. The first way to figure out a ballpark figure of your nest egg is what you traditionally see online. They're based on a percentage of your pre-retirement income, usually around 80%. The second approach is Based on this idea of financial independence and having that flexibility built in with our money, and that's calculating it by your annual expenses. I personally prefer this approach because with those traditional calculators, it's making this assumption that if you are making significant increases with your income, 
that you're automatically going to be spending more. And that's not necessarily the case. I feel it's so important to establish now what are your priorities and values so that you do spend money on those, but then cut out the needless expenses. Developing this habit of keeping lifestyle inflation under control serves you well now because it helps you prioritize, but then also with retirement, making sure that your money lasts longer while still enjoying yourself. Back of the napkin calculation for that is to take your expenses for the year and multiply that by 25. That would be your nest egg goal or your financial freedom number. Now, the next challenge that a lot of couples face when they're trying to decide how to deal with their 401k is what they should actually invest their money in. Depending on your employer, you may find that if you don't elect anything specific, they have a default investment. This may or may not be a great option for you. What's fascinating is in the investment world, you don't always get what you pay for. What I mean by that is when you look at the costs for the different investments, the one that costs more doesn't always perform better. If your employer defaults to those types of investments, it's going to be hurting you in the long run. Something that you should consider and look at are index funds for investing. Nowadays, it seems like they have multiple different index funds, which basically is an automatic bundle of investments. It could be overall general like the S&P 500, or it could be a certain sector like tech or finances. Since this episode is about focusing on giving quick answers to your big questions, I highly recommend that you run the numbers yourself and compare the different investment options that you have. You may be surprised that a fund that costs 10 times as much as an index fund does not perform over the long term better than that simple index fund. Another trend that I'm noticing with employers is that they're including target funds as part of their investment options. Some of them are fairly low cost. What makes them attractive for some families is that they automatically reallocate or shift into safer, more conservative investments the closer you get to retirement. Again, take a little bit of time to look at the expenses that are associated with that fund and also the performance. If this topic of index funds and finding better investments interests you, then please check out the show notes because I'm going to include links to several interviews, including one I had with certified financial planner, Mike Piper, about just how index funds work and why they're a great option for many families. Again, this is about you finding the best solution for your goals and your situation. Finally, let's talk about a question that comes up after you finish working at a company and you move to another one. What happens to that old 401k? Depending on how much you contributed, you have several different options. One of them being rolling it over into an IRA. And there's several benefits to doing that. One of them is having more control of what you can invest in. As you saw with the 401k, you may or may not have great options. That's because your employer chooses the plan and what investments are in the plan. But having a rollover IRA and moving that money to you means that you have more control over your money. And it can make it easier to manage because you're consolidating. The tricky part can be when you have several different accounts between the two of you with your old jobs. Recently, I discovered a great option that's free for you to use, which is Capitalize. With Capitalize, you can look up and see who the provider was for your old 401k and start the process to get that rolled over into a IRA. They work with many of the biggest providers. So if you're looking for a less stressful option, please consider that. Just go to simplifyandenjoy.com slash capitalize. There you have it. I hope this episode makes you feel more comfortable with investing in your 401k and have a better idea of the questions and conversations that two of you need to answer and have so that you create a plan that fits your family and your goals. This segment is brought to you by Coastal Credit Union. If you want to live better, you got to bank better. 
Find out how at bankbetter.org. Before we wrap up, I want to share a few key takeaways I got from preparing this episode. The first is start contributing to your 401k. Please don't wait for the perfect opportunity to start investing because time in the market can be a huge advantage. Even if you feel like these are small contributions, get started and please take advantage of the 401k match if your employer offers that. The second is automate bumping up your contributions. Even if you're starting off at a lower number than you want to, you can set a target, begin where you are, and inch up either every year or after every raise until you get to that target rate. By automating it, you're more likely to reach your goal. Finally, less is more when it comes to checking in on your 401k and other investments. There is a temptation to mess with things, switch out investments when you don't really have to. Instead, create an investment plan and a few times a year review to make sure that everything is aligned to your goals. If you have to make an adjustment to your asset allocation, you do that, but you're not messing with it needlessly. We just scratched the surface today, but if you want to talk more about this, perhaps swap ideas, stories, or ask questions about investing, and you want to talk with others in the community who are in similar situations, please reach out and join us in our free and private Facebook group, Thriving Families. We love to encourage each other with our family and financial goals. Just head over to simplifyandenjoy.com slash FB. We'd love to see you there. I hope this episode helps you get more comfortable with investing through your 401k. As always, I'll have links in the show notes to the resources we've mentioned, plus more over at simplifyandenjoy.com. Next week on the podcast, we're going to be talking about handling your finances when you're a busy family. You'll get a sneak peek at how we handle our money system and our accounts so that we are working towards our goals, even if we have more pressing or urgent things to take care of on the family front or with work. So if you don't want to miss out on that episode, make sure you're subscribed to the podcast or on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Our theme was by Staircases with additional music from various artists over at Audio. Finally, and most importantly, thank you so much for your support. If you have a question topic that you want to have covered on the podcast, please reach out and join our VIP community. It's free. Just head over to simplifyandenjoy.com slash join. I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care.